Now we've been putting in balance our beginning balances, imagining we have another accounting system or had one prior to using QuickBooks. We're entering the beginning balances into the system. These are our beginning balances. We're gonna enter them into the system as of the last day of the prior period that was in the prior accounting system, December 31st, 2022. We're gonna then start the new data in our system as of January 1st, 2023, moving forward. We started entering the most difficult balances, which are the inventory oftentimes, and the accounts receivable and the accounts payable due to them having sub ledgers that we need to be careful of as we enter the data. Inventory, having a sub ledger for the units of inventory, accounts receivable, a sub ledger related to who owes us money, customers, accounts payable, having a sub ledger related to who we owe money to, vendors. Now we're gonna enter all the rest of them and we'll give a short discussion on some things you might need to consider with them, but we won't go into them as in as much detail. It should be a little bit more straightforward to enter some of these transactions, the checking accounts, and then we'll enter the furniture and equipment, the accumulated depreciation, the visa, and the loan. Same strategy, we'll enter them one at a time. The other side of the transaction is gonna go somehow to opening balance equity, most likely to, I'm sorry, somehow to equity in total, most likely these accounts will go to opening balance equity and then we'll fix opening balance equity or the equity accounts to represent the proper uh, amount in equity, which should be in owner's equity. Okay, cash account, let's open up the cash account. Now cash has its own kind of special concerns that we'll have to deal with. And the concern is gonna be, for example, the bank reconciliation so you can connect it to the bank we're not going to be focusing on bank reconciliations here we will do that in another section or a course later the other concern also is going to be if there's outstanding checks or deposits in the system how is that going to impact our bank reconciliations we'll talk about that in the future we'll run into that problem when we do the bank reconciliations in another course or section in the future. So entering the beginning balance, we have to use this 25,000, even if that balance is different than the bank balance as of December 31st, 2022, which it may be if there was outstanding checks and deposits. But I have to use this balance to be in balance, right? And then we'll worry about that issue with those outstanding checks and deposits and we'll get into uh, how to deal with that when we get to the bank reconciliation. So if I go back to our accounts, tab to the left, and I'm gonna go into our uh, chart of accounts. I'll just do this by going to the chart of accounts and I'm gonna hold control, scroll down. It's in the accounting on the left-hand side and then chart of accounts up top. If you're in the business view, by the way, it's gonna be under the bookkeeping and then the chart of accounts on the left-hand side and then you have to open up the chart of accounts. Okay, so now this is our list of accounts that were given to us by uh, Intuit by QuickBooks when we set up our accounts. We have a cash account up top, so you might wanna like change the name of the cash account, but we might just use that cash account. That's our strategy. I'm gonna use the account if it's there. If I don't like the name, I'll change the name. If there's not an account there, then I'll add an account. So this is the they put it as their cash on hand account, so, but that's okay. I'm gonna say edit. Let's go ahead and edit this one. And then and then this sub account doesn't matter too much, but I'll just change it to my checking account. And then you might put like the name of your account. You might put the bank name and you might put like the last four digits of the account number or something like that, which is useful for internal reporting purposes because it helps you to locate which account you're dealing with if you have multiple accounts. Although it's a little bit messy for external reporting purposes, but oftentimes our goal is to get the data input as easy as possible here. And then we're gonna go down below. We've got this thing that says start date opening balances. Now you're only gonna use these when you're first setting up the accounts as we're doing here to get those beginning balances in place. So I'm gonna say uh, it's gonna be a beginning balance as of let's say beginning of the month, let's say other date, and I'm gonna choose the date as has been our, our process at the end of December, December 31st, 2022. So everything is correct as of, the, of January 1st, 2023, opening balance 25,000. And that should allow us when we do the bank reconciliations to have that opening balance be the right number 
uh, at that point in time. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it and say changing the type of tax form uh, section of the account may affect your accounting. So I'm gonna go ahead and are you sure you want to? I'm gonna say yes and close this out so now we've got our account there if i then go into my balance sheet up top and run it to refresh it now i've got the cash account which i'm going to say is my checking account and then i'm going to go into that number and it used a deposit form notice again i didn't enter a deposit form i just entered the beginning balance but it entered it with a deposit form which makes sense that's the form you would typically use to increase you know the checking account so that's what it used. There's the deposit form. It put the other side to opening balance equity, which is what we expected, closing this out. Other side in the split, also indicating opening balance equity. Back to the report. Then if I scroll down, opening balance equity. There's the other side going into it. And there it is with a deposit form. No impact, therefore, on the income statement. So I don't have to worry about that at all. So that is that one. So we'll get back to that opening balance issue and the bank reconciliation, which is kind of an issue for the first bank rec uh, in a future section or course on that.